Welcome back. In my previous lesson, I mentioned that both technical and non-technical founders should start with a concierge MVP rather than jumping into building a product. The reason I encourage the step is because it forces founders to identify the key pain points that customers are experiencing and to figure out ways of resolving them. The resolution of these pains are what the benefits are that customers want to buy. So it doesn't matter what specific features you're building, the focus should be on the benefits. And the benefits are, after all, the value proposition that customers are buying into. Now you might still be skeptical. So in this lesson, I want to showcase a few successful companies that began as concierge MVPs. You might even be shocked to know that one of these companies has become a billion dollar company. So let's start with the first case study, Zappos. The founder of Zappos, Nick, loved shoes and had a theory that other people probably loved shoes just as much as he did. He also had a theory that people might want to buy shoes online, but he wasn't 100% sure. So the first thing he did was he walked into a shoe store in San Francisco. He asked the shoe store owner about current inventory. And then he struck up a deal saying that every time someone bought a shoe on his website, he'd come over and purchase the shoe from the store owner. The store owner agreed to the deal. Then Nick went home and set up a pretty simple site, listing the inventory that was in the shoe store. What do you think happened next? Well, Nick sold his first pair of shoes, and then his second, and so on. By pursuing a concierge MVP, Nick validated his theory that people will buy shoes online. The value proposition was clear to early adopters. It was convenient to search through a large inventory of shoes and purchase them online. Only after Nick had validated his business model through his concierge MVP did he even approach Tony Shea for funds. Now let's take a look at the next case study, Airbnb. Many people have experienced the rise of Airbnb's prevalence, and they know how easy it is to book a rental online now. However, before Airbnb became what it is today, it started off as a simple side project for the three founders, and is probably one of the most classic examples of a concierge MVP. So the story goes that days before the Democratic National Convention, the three founders knew that people wouldn't be able to find a place to stay. So they piled up all their beds, hence Airbnb, into their small apartment and put up a simple ad about renting an airbed. What do you think happened next? Well, people actually rented an airbed because they were so desperate for a place to stay. Once again, the value proposition was clear. People who wanted to go to this highly sold out event and couldn't find a place to stay in traditional places such as hotels and B&Bs had an alternative they could turn to. The three Airbnb founders were able to offer them a place and their early adopters were willing to pay and sleep on airbeds. Now in both of these cases, Zappos, the billion dollar company, and Airbnb, they eventually had to do a lot to scale their business to become million and billion dollar revenue generators. But starting out with a concierge MVP, they were able to test out their first hypothesis without making a huge investment in terms of time and resources spent building a full product. They were able to prove that people would buy the experience. So let's take a look at the third and final case study, Femgineer. Yep, it's my own startup. Even in my case with Femgineer, I started as a concierge MVP. I put up a single page ad on my blog about an eight week online course on product development. I didn't even bother creating actual curriculum for the full eight weeks until I had a set of students who had prepaid for the course. Now this pre-sales tactic took a lot of the risk out of me spending my time developing curriculum. And it also made it very clear what the value proposition was that students were willing to pay for. They wanted an online course with me in it on product development. Okay, so hopefully by this point, you're starting to see the value in creating a concierge MVP. But you're probably wondering how to get started. So in the next lecture, I will walk you through how to get started.